Good afternoon guys, Doug at Lakeside Ranch. We're going to do a little um, investigative reporting today with John. Did you have a chance? John found himself an old outboard that belonged to his dad. And as you know, he broadcasted the call and asked our brother at Lakeside for a little information. So, after much ado and a lot of research, I'm going to do this in two pieces. I think I'll probably zip them together for you. But essentially we're going to look here in the shop first and then we're going to go up to the computer in the office and I'm going to show you some more tech details on this thing. So John, sit back, relax. You can take notes. Um, I'm here for you, brother. The cowl you're looking at is the exact vintage of the machine you have. This one is a 56. We did a video on this a while back. Um, I believe you have a 55. It's a Johnson and I believe looking at the lower unit and the um, power head assembly that it's a 25 horsepower. So um, these things are pretty much the same model to model, year to year, but the big deal is we got to figure out which motor you have and I'm going to show you how to do that. So hang on one second. Each one of these little motors has a unique VIN number and it's located on the transom clamp and it's riveted on there and there you can see it okay it gives you the manufacturer and the model and below it is the serial and John I know in the video um, you had said that you thought the thing had been painted with house paint if you take a little stripper you can clean the plate off the numbers are stamped so you won't wash them off you're also missing this key component, which is a tiller arm. Maybe it was connected up with remote controls and remote steering, which is very possible. Because um, what you have, if I can zoom in here for you, is you have that gear drive assembly right there showing, and you do not have this tiller arm. No big deal. They're almost all the same. They're very easy to come by. The other item which you had in your parts box is this guy right below the recoil right here this is called an air silencer it these things do not use air filters because they operate in squeaky clean air on the lake so no air filters on any of the models that I've ever seen and I've seen a lot of these the other item in your parts box is the faceplate which looks like that. Your particular model is the old vintage two-line fuel setup which we have here and again fed into the uncompromising very well built float carburetor. And if you remember in the last video we did the float carburetor which I just happen to still have on the bench because I haven't been working in this part of the shop so there you go I'm going to show you the exploded views of all this stuff uh, when we get upstairs to the computer but right now I just want to give you the quick uh, the quick shot on that the other thing I wanted to show you which you had a concern about was the what you had referred to as possibly a data plate what it is is this little guy right here this is your access to the shift linkage which is housed in this lower exhaust housing that plate removes with those two screws and what it does is it allows you to disconnect your shift linkage when you pull the lower unit out of this thing so um, the only thing you didn't give me any info on is the fuel tank and hopefully this is the fuel tank that you have because I'm sure if your dad ran that motor there's a fuel tank somewhere and you want to try to get your hands on it because these are pretty rare this is the one pump style and this is the other pump style which is the one with the aluminum we've talked about it before the aluminum plunger versus this guy which uses the black plunger located there okay so I think we pretty much covered all the bases on the hardware end of things and I'm going to shut you off 
and we'll go upstairs into the office and I'll put you guys on the tripod and we'll get you uh, some technical information on this thing okay all right I'll be right back guys okay guys I'm back thanks for waiting um, I'm using a Johnson factory service manual um, which is available online uh, from a couple of uh, sources and John if you'd like I can mail you this thing you can borrow it um, it is copy protected but there's a huge amount of information on here you can print the PDF files and whatnot so uh, that's where I get the source from and today we have the, the fortunate capability of running two computers so I can uh, take you through this pretty quickly the first thing I want to show you uh, in the carburetion section which we're looking at now is your airbox assembly which was in your separate parts box so uh, let's get in here and hopefully this is going to show up there's your innards of your fuel tank we're not going to worry about that today but um, we will be looking at uh, uh, something else here Let's get down here too. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully this doesn't make you sick when it's jumping around. This is your intake side of your power head. And I think we're going to get rid of the hand here. We're going to go back to the mouse pointer. I think it'll be better. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this is your reed valve assembly, your reed retainer, your gaskets, and this is of course your intake housing. The studs are what your carburetor is mounted to. I believe you have the wrong carburetor on that engine, John. Um, and the reason I say that is this choke rod is the giveaway. There's a little hook on the end of it. Also, the metering shafts are split. There's a little screw. It's conical head. It expands and holds the levers for the adjustment. The other thing, I didn't see this glass fuel bowl, which is located below the main bowl here. Your airbox assembly, which is in your cardboard spare parts box with the propeller, that's this guy right here. Inside there is a piece of silencing material. It's not a filter. And there's a little piece of extruded stainless, expanded, I'm sorry, not extruded. And what that does is it silences the intake sound like the carburetor when the four barrel opens, you get that deep sound. Two strokes make a lot of noise, especially twins. So to keep that quiet because the carburetor is on the front of the motor, they utilize this little sound guy, and this is your intake hose, this piece of rubber stuff. Okay? That's basically all there is to the carburetor. The kits and stuff are very available for these motors. Um, Sierra, OMC, and there's a couple other aftermarket companies that sell all these components. The carb rebuild kits are very inexpensive. What you cannot do is you cannot procure these little springs and little shafts and collars and what have you. Those components are not available anymore, so you have to go find a parts motor. But um, you mentioned about scrapping the thing. I would not scrap it. It's got to have sentimental value. And if you take it basically from the beginning, if it has spark and if it has compression, you can do the carburetor. The thing will probably run. If you've got 90 pounds of compression, it'll definitely run. This is a better view of the airbox installed on the power head. Notice these little mixture levers? Those are the exact ones that are on your engine now. Those are the correct ones, but I believe your carburetor is not because it's probably difficult to see this. But there's a float basket right there, a glass bowl. That's a water separator. I don't think you had that on your carburetor. So there's another carburetor in the parts box that may be the one for you. But this is your airbox assembly with that rubber tube I just showed you in the exploded schematic. And notice your flywheel and your recoil assembly. I believe those are identical. You've got an RD17 or RD18. Those are the model numbers. Those are going to be stamped on your tag that we talked about on the transom clamp. That's the front view, how it works, no biggie. Again, this stuff is available. The, some of the aftermarket companies that produce this information don't give you all the good stuff. Like, here's your actual airbox. They, the aftermarket guys show you the picture there. They don't show you any of the nuts and bolts or meat and potatoes, as we say in the business, how it works and how it's actually designed. And a lot of times, 
in these manuals, see this is ID 17, ID 18, these fit more than one model, which is good news because if you lose a part or you're missing a part, very easy to find. And a lot of times you can buy a complete parts motor for 50 bucks. And the lower unit in one of these guys right now will bring 300. Never mind the power head. Um, you know, there's just a, a, a wealth of uh, a wealth of product there, and it's a shame to get rid of this stuff. But uh, anyway, you know, you got a Mustang to do, so this will be kind of a hobby for you. But huge information in here, huge. This particular model has the no tiller. See this lever? That's the throttle lever which operates the linkage which can, controls the magneto because these are point driven machines. One of the things you probably want to look at John is pull the flywheel off. Obviously after you remove the recoil over here take this whole assembly off. There's one center nut. Pop the flywheel off just like a lawnmower and you're going to find two coils. There they are right there. The old style coils are epoxied with friction tape. They're not high potted. They crack. And if they crack, they don't produce enough spark to run correctly. Or they run and they get hot and they shut off. So coils are not big money. 40 bucks for a pair. Two condensers and, a, and two sets of points. You're back online. Because this thing is coiled per cylinder. The, all these engines are built the same way. The old stuff. And like I say, I believe yours is a 55. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I say that because of the green color. It's a shame somebody, you know, gaffed it up with the house paint, but that's pretty easy to get off. So, uh, what I do with the ones that come in that are really bad, I soda blast them 100% back to bare aluminum. It doesn't gaff up the aluminum at all. You can leave the motor assembled, just pull the power head off, and, say, and soda blast the entire assembly. Then, coat it with chromate primer. I use um, Edge Primer, that SEM stuff, and then fire it with the... Um, the factory uh, lacquer that you can still buy from the, the outboard guys. Works out spectacular. You can even get the decals. And I can PM you some information. I have five websites that are phenomenal for all this stuff. So if you've got the patience and you want to play with it, you can make the thing a really, really nice piece. If nothing else, to have to uh, display, you know, in the barn or, 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 you know, stick it in the house, do whatever. Um, they're a lot of fun to fool around with. And this machine, brand new, was, uh, if I go back, let's see, just real quick so I can show you what's going on with this. This is kind of, this is funny because uh, I believe, oh, maybe we're not going to find it here. Um, I do have a file here. I don't know if it's on this computer. The original list price of the motor and also the weight. And I believe your motor comes in at 110 pounds, was the original, but um, I don't have the right disc. All right, I'm going to shut this off, and uh, there isn't anything here we really need to, uh, to deal with. So hopefully that helps you, brother, and uh, thanks for